So this is the an any an <laughs> wow. So this is the unedited uh, clip, and we're now in my PC. So I just minimize this so that we can just be following this as I go. Sorry for the lack of organization on my PC desktop. I think this, these were supposed to be much more organized. Apologies for that. So the first things first, let's head over to our school folder. So what are we going to be looking at today? Let's head over to our school folder. Uh, what's open? Management of labor. I think this was yesterday. Um, let's open up a school folder. So what are we studying today? I think we'll look at fifth and seventh here. Um, let's open topics. Okay. Med 7. The, the topics are slightly different. As you can see, this is a slightly different list that you may have, especially if you're in fifth year. As you can see, this is tailored for my seventh years. And it has a little bit more on clinical approach and clinical management, as you can already see here. I hope the study session actually won't take as much. And maybe we'll just study for... We won't go more than an hour, at least. So... Let's choose a topic. Um, okay, I've done meningitis. Um, unconscious and comatose patients. Eh. Stroke, not really. It's too long. Seizures, epilepsy. Okay, fine. Let's do syncope. I think this is one topic that I haven't read as much or haven't really done so much concerning it. So let's, let's have a look at syncope today. So the first things first is let's open up our Word document. So Microsoft Word, and we create a new document, and we shall call it syncopy. And I think this is, we'll save it to our study notes. So usually I like to put my notes in, in random stuff, like I have so many weird folders on my PC. So let's go here. Um, where else, where else do we go? Uh, school, no, we don't put it in the school folder. No, we don't do that. Uh, look for the folder that says school stuff school stuff not really school here unsorted school stuff okay unsorted school stuff so we shall call this as a syncope syncope okay and save right so first things first before i start my notes i usually like to so that i don't forget this was prepared by of course yours truly Prepared by, oh, I always forget. Okay. And we can actually change the fort. I don't like uh, Calibri, so I usually like Times New Romans or Aerial Rounded. So we'll use Aerial Rounded, we'll make that as 12. And my trademark colors, we'll put this in blue. And of course we'll put this in red. Okay, and then don't forget to be saving as you go because this is this is our notebook this is how we're going to be studying and this is how i study if you really are interested then we can edit the headers here so that it, it makes it so let's exit this uh, we can edit the headers here so that it makes some form of sense that the headers should be larger than the rest of the text so we can put this at 18. we make this bold i usually like my headings in red that's for the first level heading. Then the second level heading, we, we what what font do we use? Eighteen. Okay, you can put this at sixteen. We round it. Then we still make that as red. We put that as bold. And then I like to have three levels, three levels of headings. So three levels of headings. Then this one we'll put it at fourteen, and we'll keep it blue. We'll keep it blue like that. But of course, we'll make it a bit bold. Okay, so three levels of headings. Let's edit the text now and you modify the text. The text, I want it to be Arial. I don't want it to be in bold. And I want it to be 14. I also love my text being justified. So make sure that your work is justified at least. So this is just me setting up everything so that our studying is made much more easier. So we'll start with our heading one. So we're going to be looking at syncope. Okay, and don't forget to be saving. I'm pressing Control S. If you're using a MacBook, I don't know how that's going to be. So let's not get carried away. So we chose syncope as a, as a topic that we're going to be studying today. 
let's go now into our folder our research material so the books as you can see they have a bunch of books okay so the first book that i usually love to open is kumai and clark uh, kumai and clark is the first book that i love to open uh, okay fine great so if you're searching for a topic you can actually use this search bar here just type syncopy and it will take you to where syncopy is if this is taking a while you can actually scroll down to the end or you can just click end on your keyboard to go to the index and then you can search from the index going backwards it's easier you find the topic easier as you can see it's page 1116 over there so i'll simply enter this page number here okay so here is syncope so other causes of blackouts and all that so this is the section here that we're going to be reading through together and having a look as you can see it's not really that much it's just ending up to here this is starting with sleep disorders over there i'm not really talking about sleep disorders in this video um okay so syncope syncope is what we're going to have a look at so let's check out another textbook so let's check out what we have in first aid first aid okay first aid i've even opened i think i opened this prior some time back and i actually felt lazy to read this so it's already on syncope so it's the same procedure if you want to look for, look for it so fine that's that's good and uh, what other book are we going to use what other book are we going to use let's see pocket medicine pocket medicine we can just search syncope there uh, syncope okay there's even an index here so s we're on s so syncope is actually over here so here is how to take a history the test that will do differential diagnosis management so this is going to be very needful let's open something else this is last minute last minute board exams do they have anything on syncope index Okay, do they have anything on syncope? Yes, they do. 451. So 451. This is unedited. As you can see, this is not page 451. So you have to keep scrolling a bit to get to page 451. So let's scroll a bit. Scroll a bit. 451. I think I passed it. Okay, so this is a neurology okay here distinguishing between okay this is generalized tonic chronic seizure so it may not be as useful but we may actually add this table it seems it seems like we can use this table here it, it can be very very useful so we'll leave this here because i'm just arranging the work before we actually start going through the material together let's see what does harrison say concerning syncope i know for sure this internal medicine good book does not have syncope in it for some reason so i won't even waste time opening it so let's go through this here is there anything on syncope here okay page 128 128 128 okay i hope this isn't this isn't long so approach to syncope okay i love this because sometimes it gives you an approach and oof. okay okay Okay, fair enough. I think we'll save this for the last bit. All right. Okay, so we have our books opened up. Anything else that we would want to open up? Is there anything else concerning the... Okay, clinical medicine. I sometimes use that. So let's see if there's anything concerning syncope. Uticaria pigmentosa. Okay, here, syncope, actually. There is something concerning syncope. Okay, and weirdly enough, it's just before sleep disorders, just like in Kuma and Clark. It's very, very similar. Okay, fine. Okay, so these are the books that were opened up. Let's see if we can open up any other protocols in relation to this, or if there is anything concerning the protocols in relation to syncope. So, guidelines. I love guidelines anything on syncope nothing in this so we can close that it's pretty much useless anything on the clinical guidelines from here nothing from that so that's pretty useless so we can close that as well maybe our own guidelines perhaps yeah i had hope but there was nothing let's see from this 
Isn't there anyone talking about syncope? Okay, fine. Let's assume that it's in the textbooks. So this is the last one, and then we can start. Finally, I think this is just the same document, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it should be the same document. Okay, fine. Great enough. So we can start and have a look at... We can even close this on high yield. We can have a look at what we're going to start with. Okay, this doesn't start. I don't like the way this starts here. Um, I think this gives us a very good start point. So we can actually get... We can drag this. We can minimize this. And we can drag this and then put it like that so that we can have our notes here. As well, reading through there, we are actually compiling the notes. So I like to put everything and all my points in a specific manner. So... So syncope we're reading is defined as transient loss of consciousness and posture tone accounts for 3% of ER visits and up to 6% of the hospitals. Okay, fine. So syncope is the loss, is the transient. Transient, that's not how you spell transient. Transient loss of consciousness. Consciousness and posture tone. Tone, okay. It should be distinguished from other causes e.g. seizures as we can see we already we already saw something about seizures much much earlier on okay so syncope accounts for syncope accounts for three percent three percent of all emergency room visits and 6% of hospital admissions. Admissions. Okay. Um, so, okay. So that's that's a, a good definition. So we can highlight this. The transient loss of consciousness over there. And posture return. So that's important for you to remember. Any, what does Kuma and Clark actually say concerning this? So this should be distinguished from a fit, uh, seizure and or other types of attack uh, to a clinical one, depending on the history and eyewitness account. Okay, fine. So we can say this can be done. So this can be done with history, with a carefully taken history. Carefully taken history. History and physical examination. Examination. I hope this video is not so long. Mm. Carefully taken history, we can say including, including eyewitness account, eyewitness account. Okay. So mistaking a syncopia for loss of consciousness for a seizure is the most frequent error made in the differential diagnosis. Okay, fine. So this already explained what they are trying to put out there. So here we have other causes of blackout box, twenty two point. Two, three. So we can just click on that, I think, and it will take us to the box. Okay, so here are some causes of blackouts and funny turns. Epilepsy could be syncope, and here are the types of syncope. It could be non-epileptic attacks, so pseudo-seizure, panic attacks, hyperventilation, hunger, guys. Hunger, you should eat. Um, drop attacks, hydrocephalic attacks, basilla migraines, severe vertigo, cataplexy, narcoplexy. It's a very, very funny... Um, series. I cannot even see. I don't know if there's a movie of Mr. Bean and he had narcolepsy and just falling asleep randomly during the day. Then sleep paralysis. Okay, fine. So those are just some of the cause, causes. I don't know. Okay, fine. It was above. Some of the causes of syncope. So I've taken care of that paragraph there. So this one here will come pretty much at the end. So I don't want to go into that. And this one also may come pretty much on differential diagnosis. So let's see what this one says before we come to this as the last. So we'll put this one here. So episodes of transit disturbance of consciousness and falls are a common clinical problem. Okay. It is usually possible to distinguish between a fit and a seizure, a fit and other types of attacks from the description in an eyewitness account, which is similar. So falls must be distinguished from episodes of disturbed consciousness. The precise cause of falls in adults with they are sequelae such as femoral fractures often remains ill-defined. Okay, so there's a risk. So syncope, syncope has a risk of injury, of injury to an individual. 
video especially in adults in adults it may so that should be a comma there it may it may result in female fractures femoral fractures fractures okay so falls with without loss of consciousness are common in extrapyramidal disease collapse is non-diagnostic and the term should be avoided so that's a very very important point actually so falls so we can actually get it as it is so falls without loss of consciousness loss of awareness are common in extrapyramidal disease pyramidal disease okay that's what not exactly the term collapse is non-diagnostic and generally should be avoided so we want to use the word syncope or fainting or faint syncope or fainting all right so we can actually highlight this in blue so that we can have some perspective on that. So this is non-diagnostic and should generally be avoided. So we generally avoid using the term collapse over there. Okay, so causes of an attack, disturbing consciousness and falling. Okay, right, syncope, that's vasovagal attacks. The simple faint that over half the population experience at some time, particularly in childhood in youth or in pregnancy is due to sudden bradycardia so i think this is dealing with a specific type of syncope specific type of syncope okay fine so let's get back to harrison what does harrison actually say about this so approach to the patient the diagnosis of syncope is often challenging the cause may only be apparent at the time of the event leaving few if any clues when the patient is seen later by the physician the physician should think first of other causes that constitute a therapeutic emergency okay so rule out other causes that are going to be an emergency okay so it should be distinguished from other causes this can be done with a careful uh, taken history including eyewitness account and physical examination so in all cases cases of syncope the physician must rule out other causes of emergency okay among them are massive internal other causes of emergency e.g massive internal hemorrhage in, in all cases of syncope it should be a coma yeah I thought so so uh, massive massive internal hemorrhage hemorrhage or myocardial infarction myocardial infarction which may be painless and cardiac arrhythmias okay so we can add cardiac arrhythmias here cardiac arrhythmias arrhythmias fine so in elderly patients, a sudden faint without obvious cause should arouse a suspicion of complete heart block, even though all findings are negative when the patient is seen. So this is very important. We talked about elderly here. So we can add this as a sub point here. That in elderly patients, elderly patients, in elderly patients, a sudden faint, a sudden faint without an obvious pause should arouse suspicion G suspicion of complete heart block heart block or or a tachyarrhythmia tachyarrhythmia arrhythmia Even, even when findings are negative at the time of presentation. As you can see, I'm not really copying everything word for word. I'm summarizing and making it 
easy for you to understand and to follow as and I'm thinking of someone else who's going to be reading my notes making it easy for them to follow so it's already been 20 minutes oh jeez so this depicts an algorithmic approach to uh, syncopy that's figure 20.1 I think we'll come back to that so I, I, up until this point I think we can actually go back because most of them have now taken an outlook of what they say okay so let's just now go to so the next heading that we shall put under here is approach to syncope so to say approach or causes of syncope i think let's put approach first approach to syncope okay and the first thing that we'll look at is history so this is heading three history Okay, so history and physical examination established the diagnosis at 50% of the patients with syncope. Okay, that doesn't help me at all. However, specific findings are dependent on the underlying etiology and knowledge of the differential diagnosis is critical. That's table 10.19. Now, table 10.19 are the pretty much the different types or the different mechanisms associated with syncope. But I, I saw in, in, this, in this last minute, was it last minute? A pocket medicine. Okay, fine. So on history, what are we going to be asking? Okay, so transient loss of consciousness, prodrome of malaise, nausea, pala. Okay, so events before the syncope. Events before syncope. Syncope. So what, what was the patient doing? I'm doing so there are many events that can actually precipitate syncope so we probably we can say maybe bowel movements bowel movements urinating standing so what was the person actually doing before and how long how long were they unco- were they unconscious where where were they unconscious sorry my, my brain also glitches how long were they unconscious and prodromal malaise nausea pala diaphoresis weakness so do they have any of these symptoms okay so loss of muscle tone is 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 common so this we can just put loss of muscle tone okay did the patient recover did the patient recover once they were flat or we can say recumbent so did they recover when they were flat or recumbent any urinary incontinence urinary or fecal incontinence Okay, so is this the first episode? Is this the first episode? The first episode. Okay, uh, precipitants. Precipitants. So acute or anticipated pain, acute or anticipated pain, emotional stress. Fluid loss, obstructed venous return, intense activity in the heart. So I believe that would be maybe palpitations and other activity and other cardiac symptoms. Symptoms. Okay. Okay, what else? Postural hypotension. Oh, prolonged standing. I think that this goes hand in hand with the events before the syncope. Prolonged standing. Postural hypotension when they get up from laying down flat. Is there any history of cardiac arrhythmia? So this, this I think should go into the past medical history. Past medical history. History of syncope. Okay, cardiac conditions especially arrhythmias very very important so that those are the important things that according to this up until we reach this point 
concerning um, cardiac conditions, even anemia can actually cause syncope. I've seen some people fainting. Have they eaten? Because it could be hunger. So last meal is very, very important. Last meal. So last meal. Because someone could be fighting, or rather fasting, not fighting. Fasting. So that's also another important thing. Cardiac arrhythmias, evidence of dysautonomia, so postural hypertension. So this is on physical examination. So there should be a slot for physical examination here. So physical examination. So the first point is examination is usually normal. Usually normal. Inveso, vago, syncope. We'll talk about that. I, I think I saw that um, in the other book. So examination is usually normal. So full cardiovascular examination. Cardiovascular examination. So you should look out for cardiac arrhythmias. Arrhythmia. Oh, evidence of this autonomia. So pretty much postural hypertension, impaired sweating, pupillary abnormalities, abnormalities. Okay, so maybe found in tennis. Okay, so we should also have, um, I think this shouldn't go here. The dysautonomia, the evidence of dysautonomia should go on neurological examination. Neurological examination. Evidence, yes. So evidence of dysautonomia. So may be found in the CNS or PNS. Okay, so those are the important things you do with history. Also, family history is very important. Family history of syncope. Diabetes is also another cause of dysautonomia. So we can actually put that here. And social history. So their occupation is also important. Imagine they're, just, they're a soldier. So their occupation, what else could be important? Smoking and alcohol. Okay, I think we'll add to this list when we come back and look at the causes. So approach to syncope and then we'll come to investigations here. Investigations. But remember, all this is coming under approach to syncope. So I think there should be some causes that we put here so causes all types of syncope there should be some causes here because there will be a differential diagnosis that we put so okay this is just distinguishing between the two this is just causes here so i think first aid had a good way of putting them okay um 50% okay that's fine so we can now add add these these causes here so I think the most important one here should be the most common ones should be a vasovago so we can say here those that are neuromediated neurally how many minutes have passed 28 minutes okay neurally mediated mediated so this is pretty much your vasovago Vasovago, vasomotor, neurocardiogenic, and situational. Situational. These are these are very very important. So here these are going to be preceded by nausea, flushing, diaphoresis. Remember we asked for all these things in the history. Tachycardia. Tachycardia. Okay. I think we can add this as a, a point under tachycardia and autonomic symptoms. Not syndrome, symptoms. Often present or persist upon awakening. Okay, so occurs during, that's also another important thing. Occurs during emotional stress or pain or in specific situations for example while coughing 
while coughing, micturating, or defecating. Imagine you're pooping and you faint. I know, I shouldn't have laughed. God, I'm sorry. So, so these are neurally mediated. So these are going to include vasovagal. It should be to do with the vagus, the vasomotor, more or less the blood vessels. Neurocardiogenic, I think, should be also be doing with the cardiac causes of syncope. Because remember, arrhythmias can also cause syncope and pre-syncope. The situational should be now the different situations that could lead to a syncope. Of course, there should be some mechanisms to this. I think Harrison talked about certain mechanisms here. Okay, so... Yeah, here they just cardiogenic syncope and all that. And we're talking about something else. Anyways, those are investigations. Um, so, diagnostic work here. So, the nature of the events and their time course immediately prior to, during, and after the episodes of syncope provide valuable clues. So, that should be added to the history. So, events before syncope, events before, during, and after syncope. Very important. Then, where else were we? Um, that's what, 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 where am I, where am I? Um, so loss, the nature, okay, the nature of the events and the time course immediately prior and during and after the episodes of syncope, okay, we've read this. Loss of consciousness in a particular situation such as during, but what, oh, vasotone usually suggest abnormality of vascular tone. Okay, so we can actually add this as like a small box. Usually love to add these small boxes here so that we can... We can have these small boxes. We, you can actually cho choose these text boxes. Um, you can either choose the simple ones or these ones. I think these ones look sophisticated. Where you can actually add a sidebar here. Okay, I love, I love these sidebars here. So we can just say Vaso. Syncopy hint. Syncopy hint. And then actually remove this here and we say loss of consciousness I'll, call, I'll correct that uh, in a particular situation such as doing the veni puncture so those people that see needles and they faint nicturition urinating or with volume depletion depletion suggest an abnormality an abnormality of vascular term so this is just one box that's just going to stand out conscious that should be the word yeah that should, be, that should be the word. Okay, we can decrease the size of this box because we don't want it to be completely huge and long like that. And we can even change the color. Okay, so we make it just the right size there. Ooh, something has disappeared on top. Okay, there we go. Or we can actually make this a bit bigger and reduce this here and make this a bit bigger here okay so um, what color can we actually use and it look professional okay this one looks professional yeah yeah this looks like as if it's been professionally done somewhat and we can simply move this box to the right yeah, just underneath the history here so that it's correlating when someone is reading the history bit then they can also read that so obvious causes something wrong here okay so we save our work and we continue so the position of the patient at the time of syncope episode is important um okay so this is a very important thing here this statement here is a very important thing Okay, so we can add it under here. And we can say... 
the position of the patient at the time of the syncopal episode is important. Syncope in the supine position is unlikely to be vaso vago and suggests an arrhythmia or a seizure. It's very, 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 very important. Very, very important point to actually take note of. Okay, so let's get back to this one here. So, right, then... Okay, so those are the main types of syncope. I think the other important one here is carotid hypersensitivity. Carotid sinus. Because I saw a segment in Harrison. Carotid sinus. Hypersensitivity. Sensitivity. Okay. Because I saw, I saw something here. Carotid sinus syndrome. Okay, so here, this is a specific, so this is a specific type, type of neurally mediated syncope seen in older patients, classically provoked by neck stretching. Imagine stretching your neck and then you faint. By neck stretching, e.g while shaving which is why it's important to ask what the patient was doing or while looking over the shoulder this is why I use your view mirrors when driving when driving a car in reverse okay so this is a type of neuro mediated was there something about neuro mediated here okay nope there isn't, so we can leave that here. Okay, so a type of neurally mediated, driving a car not to care. Carotid hypersensitivity. So let's see what they're saying. A syncope due to carotid sinus uh, syndrome may occur when an individual is wearing a shirt with a tight collar. That's why I undo the tie when someone faints. So, a while shaving or wearing a tight collar shirt. collar shirt. So as we can see, this is also referred to as carotid sinus syndrome. So you can put that in brackets. Carotid sinus syndrome. Okay. Or manipulating the neck while shaving the patient. The patient's medication must be noted. Oh. Drugs. I forgot about the drug history. Okay, past drug history. Drug history. The patient's medication must be noted, including non prescript So, including non-prescription. Prescription drugs. Okay, especially the recent ones. Especially the recent ones. Okay, how much time has gone? 30, 38 minutes. Okay, especially the recent ones. So the physical examination should include evaluation of the heart rate, the blood pressure. Okay, so vitals are very important. So vitals. So under the vitals is the heart rate and blood pressure. Heart rate and blood pressure. What did they say? In the supine sitting and standing positions in patients with unexplained recurrent syncope an attempt should be okay so we can add this as a note note in patients with recurrent unprovoked is it unprovoked did they say unprovoked in patients with recurrent unexplained patients with recurrent unexplained unexplained Episodes an attempt should be made to reproduce an attack as this may aid 
in diagnosis. Okay, so anxiety attacks induced by hyperventilation can be reproduced by, okay, so this is an example of how we can do it. So anxiety attacks, anxiety, anxiety attacks induced by hyperventilation can be reproduced readily by having the patient breathe rapidly and deeply for two to three minutes. Okay, so cough syncope may be produced, may be reproduced by inducing the valve salva maneuver. So that's like what you're doing when you're pooping, you're about to poop. That's forced expiration on a closed glottis. And carotid. Carotid. Sinus massage should generally be avoided. Be avoided even in patients with suspected carotid sinus hypersensitivity as there's a risk there is a risk of transient ischemic attacks TIA or stroke in individuals with carotid atheromas okay so anyone with um this don't do a carotid massage you may dislodge a, a blood clot and it may kill this patient so here straight on they've gone into diagnostic tests so it means i've actually done this bit here and so we get back to this one here and have a look at what they are saying here so okay so fine we read up to there so the simple faint of our experience at childhood so vasodilatation, this simple syncope, also known as neurocardiogenic syncope, is a common. So this is all talking about neurocardiogenic syncope. So I think they talked about something on neurocardiogenic. Okay, fine. So there is a point here on neurocardiogenic that we can actually put under there as neurocardiogenic. Here, neurocardiogenic type of syncope. So whatever they are saying here. So this is common. This is common in over half the population, the population, particularly in childhood, youth, or pregnancy, and is due to sudden reflex bradycardia with vasodilation of both peripheral and splanchnic vasculature. So I think that explains how it comes about. So the neurocardiogenic here. Okay, so this is occurs in over half the population. So it's very important in children. It's very important in youths. It's very important in pregnant women, and is due to reflex bradycardia with vasodilatation of peripheral and splanchnic. So all the blood is like pooling at the feet. And that's how this patient actually faints. So this simple syncope also known. So it's also referred to as simple syncope. So we can call this as a simple syncope. Okay, so that takes care of that. It is a common response to prolonged standing fear. Okay. Okay, fine. So this is... Okay, so this is a common response to prolonged standing, fear, venous section, or pain. Okay? Fear, venous section, or pain. So syncope must, is almost never, I think I wrote this point down, the subject falls to the ground and is unconscious for at least 
for less than two minutes recovery is rapid okay so here subject falls to subject falls to the ground and is unconscious for unconscious for less than two minutes two minutes so how many minutes have gone 45 minutes okay in less than two minutes okay recovery recovery is um there was a reading recovery is rapid jerky jerky movements can occur incontinence incontinence of urine is exceptional okay right so this should be in black so we put this as an in black then what else this is a very important thing, point here of severe anemia remember when i told you about anemia so we can also ask, ask about features of anemia here um symptoms of anemia anemia so those are that's your palpitations your dizziness your headaches okay for example and um it's it's very very important also to note it's very very important to note that here is severe anemia at any age excuse the background people have come home um at any age okay severe anemia at any age can cause syncope cause syncope then syncope occurs after maturation in men particularly at night in either sex when the venous return to the heart is obstruct is obstructed by breath holding and severe coughing so i think this should be situational type of syncope i think i saw this under a situational type of syncope as you can see here occurs in specific situations this should be situational syncope so let's um, let's add this on the situational type of uh, syncope so here situational so we can put a point here on situational syncope syncope okay so we can say that micturition in men Amen. Particularly, particularly at night and in either gender, when the venous return to the heart is obstructed. Because remember that when you're doing the Valsalva maneuver, and remember that there's a cardiothoracic pump. Anyways, I don't know why I'm explaining. Aren't we studying here? You should look this up yourself. Breath holding and severe coughing. Severe coughing. Okay. So, effort syncope on exertion is of cardiac origin. So there's something also about so cardiac origin. Okay, fine. So we can highlight this here. We also talk about something about postural hypotension here. So we can get back to this. And here are some medicines actually that may cause syncope. So we can actually add this to the history. And we can say past drug history. So diuretics because of the dehydration and the electrolyte imbalances. Hyper, Antihypertensives, these are known to drop the BP very, very low. Even polypharmacy, those that are taking multiple drugs. It's an important thing to note in the history. So I think we shall add this here. So medication. Uh, so medication related. Medication related. So diuretics. Antihypertensives. And polypharmacy. Okay, so we can highlight this. And then we saw something about uh, orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic also also i hate it when that happens orthostatic hypertension okay so here there is history history of presyncope upon standing 
So I think those are the points under, underneath this. So we can add these as, as qualifying points here. Advanced, advanced age, advanced age, a drop in blood pressure and BP. So it should be systolic BP, systolic blood pressure by more than 20, 20 millimeters of mercury or diastolic blood pressure by more than 10 millimeters of mercury upon standing, upon standing. That's why it's very important to actually measure the blood pressure before when they're seated, when they're standing, for example. And there's something about autonomic insufficiency. Shy Dragger Syndrome, or multiple systemic or system atrophy. Okay, fine, we'll put that at the end. It doesn't seem like, okay, we can even bunch these as other causes. Okay, fine. So let's see, let's get back to this. So the simple faint over half the population. Okay, so this is a vascular. So this is neurocardio, this is neurocardiogenic or vasovagal syncope. It's, it's pretty much talking about similar similar mechanisms of actions i think i alluded to that so the precipitants are those we talked about so prodrome is usually brief so i think that we didn't talk about so the subject is what what so standing in so prodrome is brief dizziness and light headedness light-headed feeling often with Nausea, sweating, feeling of heat, and visual gray out may be felt. So the blackout usually they lie still, but jerking and twitching movements can occur and are sometimes mistaken for a convulsion. Jerking movements and twitching. Twitching can occur. And this is often confused with convulsions. convulsions. Okay, so they appear pale, appearance is pale, appearance is pale, incontinence of urine is exceptional. So incontinence of urine can occur and is not a good discriminator between seizures and syncope. I think that's a much better statement to say than this one here. So we can actually add this here, incontinence of urine or feces may occur, though, though this is not a good indicator, indicator, it's not a good indicator to distinguish between seizures, between a seizure and syncope. Okay, so recovery is rapid. So I think we should have put this here at this point here. Recovery is rapid. So seconds and may be followed by a feeling of general fatigue as opposed to post icto post ecto drowsiness and confusion following a seizure okay following a seizure all right so that takes care of that so here are other types of syncope as we can see here that they've been covered on different pages uh, carotid sinus uh, syncope i think due to a vagal response okay fine this actually even explains what is causing these things so we can actually add this as a qualifying statement here so due to a vagal response caused by pressure over the carotid sinus baroreceptors in the neck okay so i think that's that's okay and then postural hypotension, which is the same thing as orthostatic hypotension. So we can just call this as postural hypotension over there. So this is syncope and can occur in elderly. So it occurs in elderly. So this occurs in elderly. 
in autonomic neuropathy and with some drugs e.g. antihypertensives so sorry about the background so antihypertensives so okay fine so micturation syncope occurs during micturation so this are this are actually situational types of things situational type of syncope so you can just say, say micturition syncope syncope okay so micturition syncope here occurs during micturition in men particularly party at night okay so we can actually remove this statement here because it's like double so in either gender when the venus returns okay fine um i think this was talking about something else sorry yeah i've just realized that so this is another cough syncope here okay so in either gender when the venus return to the heart is obstructed by breath holding and severe coughing okay this can occur even with laughter imagine laughing yourself till you faint with severe laughter okay fine so that takes care of this i think we've done that part quite well so the only one that's left is convulsive syncope do they have convulsive syncope here um, no they did not have so i think we can add it here from command clock so we can add convulsive so orthostatic we'll keep it on one statement there uh, okay no there are other qualifying statements at the bottom okay fine that's fair enough so let's say convulsive convulsive syncope so here collapsing in a propped up position following a syncope results in delayed restoration of cerebral blood flow and may result in a secondary anoxic seizure ah so this is what can happen after a syncope seizure following syncope so i think we can use this as a note we can we can add this as a note here we can add this as a note so in convulsive syncope collapsing okay so we can add this as a note over here fine fair enough other conditions also this is under our differential diagnosis that we shall actually consider after this so we get back to this table here so i've done most of this Medi medicine related have we done that yeah i think we have autonomic insufficiency yes i said i'm gonna do that to the end so you can group this as other causes right so other causes so those are the main causes um, so here let's just say other causes so here that's where we can say autonomic autonomic insufficiency like shy dragger syndrome or multiple system atrophy okay so we can actually highlight that in blue you can have a look at what shy dragger syndrome is actually cardiac arrhythmias cardiac arrhythmias that's your tacky tacky and brady arrhythmia so this is characteristic murmur on oh no i'm reading something else so here there is no premonitory monetary symptoms or residual symptoms upon awakening and there's going to be a history of cardiovascular cardiovascular disease in these individuals so valvular heart disease 
of you know heart disease so here this doesn't look quite nice over here so we can make this as blue as well so valve heart disease so this is characteristic murmur on exam I don't know why it's not making them in blue instead of changing it into black so this should be changed to black here okay so heart disease is what heart disease is aortic stenosis aortic stenosis what else pulmonary stenosis pulmonic stenosis pulmonic stenosis okay so we have other myocardial ischemia so we can actually think of these as secondary type of syncope because these things are secondary conditions so this will be associated chest pain and cardiomyopathies cardiomyopathies especially the hypertrophic obstructive so what is this so mama an examination aortic dissection so here you're going to be having chest pain radiating radiating to the back so differential or differential pulses differential pulses in upper extremities differential pulses in upper extremities then pulmonary embolism so pleurisy dyspnea history history of venous thromboembolism so history of venous thromboembolism you may also have atrial myxomas here you get a tumor plop a tumor plop on auscultation, auscultation, uh, migraines. So here there'll be a subsequent, so this is subsequent headache. There's just other causes of syncope that we can actually add to our list. So they could be subsequent headaches. We'll come to seizures. So here there is a post ictal phase to keep in mind, ictal state and seizures, psychiatric. Here they are signs and symptoms of psychiatric disease. And what else is left? So vertebral, vertebral, basilar insufficiency. Insufficiency, VBI. So here there'll be tinnitus, the ringing sound in the ear, dysarthria. Diplopia, focal neurologic, neurologic findings. How many minutes have gone? Has an hour? I think an hour has passed. I think we should be towards the end now, finishing with this. All right. So focal neurological findings. So it is very unusual to have VBI as a cause of syncope without other brainstem findings. So that's very important. It is unusual. To have VBI as a cause of syncope without other brainstem findings. Okay, so that gets rid of this table here, and we can get back to the work now. So here, diagnosis. I'll skip that because that seems like it's a lot. So I'll write, I'll write diagnosis here. So I'll write investigations. Did I write a, a slot for investigations? Oh, I did write a slot for investigations. So we'll come back to that. Investigations. And um, I think the last bit here should be treatment. So this should be treatment. Let me just say management here. So treatment is dependent on the cause, on the underlying cause. Okay, so hospitalization, hospitalization is needed. 
Amen. We can just see admission. Admission. Here. So admission. So if there are risk factors, risk factors for cardiac syncope are present. So if syncope is syncope suspected, suspected to be secondary to secondary to arrhythmia, arrhythmic, or obstructive, or low cardiac output. We want to admit the patients because we want to address these other things as well. Cardiac output. Um, as patients with, because there's, a, there's an increased, so here patients with cardiogenic, cardiogenic syncope are at increased at increased risk of sudden death so that's why we generally want to admit these patients here okay so that takes care of that let's see what Kuma and Clark is actually saying so we have actually read up up until there for Kuma and Clark and here they even talk about differential diagnosis and other things here here they don't even talk about treatment Kuma and Clark is very very rapid and to the point okay let's get back to here Differential diagnosis, okay, fine. Management, during the single episodes, ensure the patient becomes recumbent, okay? So ensure the patient becomes recumbent. So laying flat, laying flat, okay? Syncope may have, so syncope may be averted by placing patient in recumbent position during precipitating circumstances. Circumstances or pre-syncope syncopal events. Okay, so if you just feel like you're about to faint, you should Assume a certain position. So follow up as needed depends on the cause. So here we can see treatment and and follow up is dependent on the underlying cause and the lane lane line. Anyways, R this should be R. Okay, so results. Okay, so what else? Complications. Okay, complications depend. So we can add complications and prognosis as the last thing here. Remember, we're not yet done. There is still investigations that we are left with to actually have a look at. But I'm just we're just trying to study through the topic and ensure that we understand. So here, treatment and follow up. So we depend on the underlying cause. So we highlight that blue, of course. So ensure that the patient is recumbent or lying flat over there. And these are the admission criteria. Okay, so prognosis also depends on underlying cause. So usually good prognosis in typical vasovagal, vasovagal syncope okay so prognosis is roughly good in base of vagal syncope right so right um what else what else what else what else what else what else so the tests the tests okay we'll come back to this and have a look at differential diagnosis let's see what this actually looks like Okay, syncope after maturation, we've talked about that. Effort syncope is of cardiac origin, post hypertension, also occurs in autonomic neuropathy. Phenothiazines, levodopa, antidepressants. So those are other drugs that can actually cause this. We can add this to the list. Uh, we won't die. So where did I put that? Okay, um, with some drugs, antihypertensives here. What other drug was actually put here? Phenothiazines, phenothiazines. Levodopa or tricyclic, tricyclic antidepressants. Recurrent problems and cardiac arrhythmias cause syncope. Okay, we've done that. 
Transient cerebellar ischemia also leads to loss of consciousness and patients sometimes faint during severe basilar migraines. So I think we can add this under migraines here. We can add this under migraines and we can just simply say transient cerebral. We can say posterior circulation ischemia. Ischemia also lead, leads to loss of consciousness and patients sometimes faint during a severe basilla migraine okay so drops attacks are instant unexpected episodes of lower limb weakness with falling largely in women over 60 years they are due to changes in blah 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 so this this looks like sudden attacks of leg weakness also occurring in hydrocephalus okay so we can add this as a box actually we can copy that box yeah this one here we can copy this box and actually add this box we can, we can actually add this box here and we have to edit it so we can say drops drop attacks here so so instant 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 unexpected episodes of lower limb weakness weakness with falling largely in women over 60 years they are due to sudden change in lower limb tone presumably of brain stem origin rather than so we should actually increase the size of this rather than rather than thromboembolism embolism so awareness is preserved so awareness is preserved is preserved sudden sudden attacks of leg weakness also occur in hydrocephalus okay okay hydrocephalus so that's a that's like a nice box that we can add there so remember you should be saving your work every time you're going because once you make this master copy and you actually read through it then you're able to understand about sympathy all right so let's just add the conditions so just other conditions we shall add them at the end okay there is a book there is a book that i think i didn't open initially there's a very very big book. this one i'm actually even on it let me also try and see if i can open brs and see if oh this is kaplan or brs kaplan and see if they actually have syncope as a topic can i switch no i can't switch with kaplan Okay, so I have to open part three of the book. Nope. Part two, perhaps? Yes, I'm looking for this index. RS. So syncope, please be there. Please be there. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. So we don't have syncope here. So maybe fainting. Let's try fainting. Let's just let's try faint. Let's try fainting. I'll be shocked if Kaplan doesn't have it. E F. Factitious hyperinsulinemia, false positive stress, fasting hypoglycemia, no fainting. No? Cool. So there's no, there's no fainting here. So 
this is another another one such book where they make actually good lecture notes. No, they don't have fainting as well here. Maybe they have this as fainting, not really syncope. Um, should be under neurology, out of level mental seizures, headaches, no syncope. Let's see if these they have faint fainting. Nothing, nothing. Okay, fine. I guess I I was okay with actually leaving it out. Okay, um, causes of attacks of disturbed consciousness and falling. Okay, fine. We'll leave that one out for now. Oh, we've talked about drops attacks. So let's come back to the investigations now. Okay, so we come back to the investigations because that's the bit that we left out here. So investigations, so testing in addition to history, ECG should be individualized. So extensive testing is often fruitful, fruitless. Extensive testing is often uh, fruitless, but should be considered in those with risk factors for an adverse outcome, e.g. patients over 45, those a, his, those a history, those with, those with, with the history of a congestive heart failure or ventricular, ventricular arrhythmia. How much time is gone? One, no, okay, fine, we're still on track. Arrhythmia and those with abnormal ECG, okay? So excessive testing is actually, is often fruit, fruitless. So it's actually pointless that uh, you investigate them unless if there's, there's an underlying cause or an underlying thing. So what are the investigations that we can do? So we can do an ECG. We can do an ambulatory ECG, which is also known as a halter monitoring. We can do an electrophysiologic testing. We don't do that even here. Upright, tilt table test. Tilt table testing. Okay. We can also do carotid sinus massage with cardiac monitoring. Okay. We can do an echocardiogram. So this is very important. Actually, we should add this just here after ECG so that we don't forget and of course uh, testing for coronary artery disease so this is with the stress electrocardiography and stress imaging studies studies Okay, so it's necessary when the history or ECG suggestive of myocardial ischemia. Testing for coronary artery disease. So myocardial ischemia. Myocardial ischemia. Okay, CT scan is also very, very important. So CT and MRI of the head. Okay, so rarely indicated. Indicated unless there is a history of head trauma. ECG is useful, or EEG rather, not ECG, EEG is useful only when seizures are suspected. And I think I did a, a, a video on seizures. So, so EEG is important when seizures are suspected. Seizures are suspected. Okay, so indicated, so CT of MRI okay so patients under 45 no history of what blah blah syncope other patients okay so testing for neurological with CT scan is very low yield in the absence of other symptoms okay so we've talked about that we we have talked about that all right so let's now see what each of the individual parts is saying, beginning with the ECG, so electrocardiography. So 
So this identifies. Identify is definitive. Definitive cause and only 5% of patients. 5% of patients, but may provide evidence of unsuspected cardiac disease. Cardiac disease and should thus be obtained in most patients. Patients. Okay, identify is okay, fine, five percent. So you know five percent is is very, very minimal in this case. So it's a very minimal thing. So let's have a look at this. Um oh I've read on that in, in Kuma and Clark. There was a table here on okay, so causes of blackouts and funny turns. So let's leave that out there. So a 12 lead ECG. So we can even be professional about this. 12 lead. So 12 lead ECG should be performed after a syncope to identify heart block. So this is going to be identifying heart block. Identifies heart block. A pre-excitation. Oh, long QT syndromes. Long QT syndromes. Okay. On QT syndrome, so you, this can help uh, pick up these things on your ECG if, if someone presents you with uh, syncope. Of course, we had said something about anemia, right? So it means it's also very important that these are not just imaging studies that we should do, also blood investigations. Blood investigations. So keep in mind your same full blood count. Full blood count to rule out anemia. Okay, so cardiac heart monitoring are required when cardiac syncope is suspected. So that's that's the monitoring. So this is useful. So this is useful when cardiac syncope is suspected. Suspected. Okay, useful when cardiac syncope is suspected. All right, and... An implantation, an implantable loop recorder is occasionally needed for infrequent events with a possible. Um, okay, so that we can put that as a point. An implantable, an implantable loop recorder is occasionally needed for infrequent events with a possible cardiac with a possible cardiac origin origin okay implanted with a possible cardiac origin so tilt tilt table testing that's page 684 is sometimes diagnostic but low sensitivity okay so somewhat somewhat diagnostic but has low sensitivity so it's somewhat diagnostic but it has quite a low sensitivity uh, table tilt testing so page six six eighty four six eighty four 684 okay so this should be under arrhythmias yeah so patient with suspected neurogenic syncope should be investigated okay so this is uh, this is essential this is essential in patients with suspected neurocardio neurocardiogenic vasovagal syncope okay so this is essential in okay so how is it done so the patient the patient is secured to a table which is tilted to positive 60 degrees positive 60 degrees to the vertical 
to the vertical plane for more than 45 minutes. Five minutes, okay? So the ECG and blood pressure are monitored throughout. Okay, so if neither symptoms, if neither, if neither symptoms, symptoms or no signs, there should be no signs, develop, we can give isoprenaline, maybe infused, maybe slowly infused, slowly infused, or glycerol, glycerol trinitrite, trinitrite, um, inhaled, inhaled, and the tilt repeated. Okay, that seems easy enough. Repeat it. So what about what about a positive test? So a positive test results in hypotension, hypotension, sometimes bradycardia, sometimes bradycardia, and presyncope, presyncope. Okay, so this supports. So this supports. The diagnosis of neurocardiogenic syncope. Quite easy enough. Okay, so when the symptoms, when symptoms and signs appear, place the patient flat to quickly reverse them. Okay, the effect of treatment can be evaluated by repeating. Okay, so the effect, the effect of treatment can be evaluated by repeating the tilt test, but it is not always reproducible. Okay, so fair enough. I think this explains how to do a table tilt test. So figure. So as you can see here, one minute of tilting of the table, you can see that the BP just when they tilt it begins to drop over there. The tracing actually begins to drop. So this is actually very, very self-explanatory. So let's get back to this aspect here. So it means that we're only left with the differential diagnosis from here. Okay, so we can actually get an extract of this. Um... Should we add a table and we get an extract? I think a table. So cardiac syncope, Stoke Adams, this is with arrhythmias. Okay, we talked about this. Um, micturition syncope, we talked about. So these we talked about. Okay, and then epilepsies. Okay, so these things, we can, we can just simply add a table for this. And then I think that should be the last thing from Comine Clark should add a table for this um, okay so let's add a table so we go to insert a table okay condition condition features so here we say non epileptic attack disorder which is known as a pseudo seizure then we can have the panic attacks. We can have hypoglycemia, vertigo, migraine. We've talked about drop attacks, yeah? I think we talked about drop attacks. And transient, transient ischemic attacks. Okay, so they just say differential diagnosis. Differential diagnosis here. So this this should come, I think, after after this bit for investigations over here before we actually come to. No, we can actually leave it there. It's fine. It's fine. Or we should we put it? Let's put it. Let's put it before management. Let's put it before management. Okay. Remember, I've not yet finished the investigations. Was 
we're still supposed to actually have a look at this. So let's get back to this actually. You see how my studying is just so haphazard sometimes. So it detects arrhythmias caused by syncope in less than 5%. That's an ambulatory. Let's get back to ambulatory. Where are the investigations? Ambulatory. So it's useful when um, cardiac syn syncope is suspected. Okay. So that's in less than 5% of patients. 5 of patients. Of patients. That's a very, very small fraction, actually. But may detect normal rhythm during symptoms. Okay, exclude blah, blah, blah. This yield somewhat lower. Okay, but that doesn't add anything to that. And then the echocardiograph here, important. So may show. Oh, obtain. Obtain an echo when there is suspicion of left ventricular dysfunction or valvular disease and history of physical examination. Okay, so we can obtain an echo. That's one investigation we can do. Okay, we've already talked about stress, echocardiograph. And this is nothing new being added there. Then reversed for the patients in an event that the what causes has been excluded and neuron mediated. Okay, fine. Carotid massage with cardiac monitoring. Okay, fine. So this needs a qualifying statement for this. So this should be completed, completed in older patients without a readily identifiable cause of syncope. Syncope or in those with symptoms suggest, suggestive of carotid, carotid, Sinus hypersensitivity, sensitivity, a three second pause is diagnostic and may indicate need for a pacemaker. Okay, so that's with the carotid massage and carotid monitoring. Okay, great. So that must be everything from here. Yeah. It should be everything from this book. So I think we're done with this book. So once we finish with this book, we can close it off like that. And we can come now to finish up with this from Kuma and Clark. So I think, let me just confirm if these are also going to be present here. Okay, so we have non-epileptic attacks. So we can even add here epilepsy. So let's add epilepsy, insert above, we can say epilepsy, epilepsy over there, okay, panic attacks, hyperventilation, so here, other things to consider, other causes to consider, so um, Panic attacks was already there. Hyperventilation, drop attacks, hydrocephalic attacks, which I talked about, basilar migraines, severe vertigo, cataplexy, narcolepsy, and sleep paralysis. Okay, so let's let's add some color to this table. I love I love this one here. Okay, we can add the borders, the borders to this. So we can add all the borders. Okay, and we can actually save this. All right, so epilepsy surgery. Oh, that's something else something else okay so now let's get back to this 
So translate to ischemic attacks I almost never okay here so almost never almost never a cause of loss of consciousness consciousness so migraines here with severe basal migraine and familial hemiplegic migraine may occasionally, occasionally lead to loss of conscious consciousness vertigo so when acute vertigo can be sufficiently sufficiently severe as to cause prostration a few seconds unresponsiveness sometimes follows sometimes follows okay so how much how much time is actually gone so we're almost one hour 30 so we're actually concluding our study session today sorry again for the background so here causes confusion followed by loss of conscious consciousness sometimes with a convulsion dysphagia dysphagia o hemi paresis there is often warning with hunger malaise shaking and sweating prompt recovery so think of a time when you're just hungry prompt recovery occurs with IV oral or oral or oral glucose and prolonged hypoglycemia Glycemia causes wide spread cerebral damage so hypoglycemic hypoglycemic attacks unrelated to diabetes are rare okay feeling faint feeling faint after fasting does does not indicate indicate anything serious so don't worry if you are feeling like as if you're about to faint after serious after a hypoglycemic attack then it's two aspects remaining so let's have a look at this so normal in just a normal invasive hypoglycemia abnormal autonomic function indicates that tilt table test may be may reproduce symptoms and indicate cardiac abnormality uh, lab studies may reveal systemic causes anemia cardiac metabolic also cardiac metabolic toxic and endocrine so it means that even even on on this um, urea creatinine and electrolytes and electrolytes very important liver function tests liver function tests as well as liver enzymes liver enzymes very important of course there may also be hypoglycemia so diabetes so serum glucose estimation is also very important we always assume that someone who has fainted is hypoglycemic until we prove otherwise and always causes of syncope may be revealed by okay blah 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 okay we've talked about that as well that's the, the second part okay so i think that should be done from this book so we can close it off i remember here we're just dealing with this table here distinguishing between tonic chronic seizures from syncope so seizures no precipitating there is a precipitating there are some premonitory symptoms in syncope uh, posture or non-set any posture so here we're generally standing okay 
So this is the last last table that I'll actually put. The so last table to towards the end. Okay, so we can save this here and we can put this here at the end. So we distinguish between so distinguishing between so table two. Table two distinguishing distinguishing between generalized tonic clonic seizures from syncope okay so this should be underlined and then this is this should be table one here table one as a differential diagnosis differential diagnosis okay so this sorry oops this should be underlined here as well Okay, so I, I love the same color that I have been using. So we shall still maintain the same color. Okay, and the same borders over here. Same borders. Okay. So I should have added three columns. So right here. So borders here. Feature, seizure, syncope. Okay, so precipitating factor here. Then premonitory symptoms. Then posture at onset. Onset transition. Transition, transition, whoa, transition, sorry, my mind is now getting tired, to unconsciousness, unconsciousness, I don't know, my mind is just glitching, transition is spelled like that, unconsciousness, oh, duration of unconsciousness, jeez, why am I spelling this wrong? Okay, duration of tonic and or chronic movements, facial appearance. I think we need to, we need to add a little bit more columns here. So we need to add a little bit more columns at the bottom. Okay, so post event, confusion or lethargy tongue biting, incontinence, elevated CPK, that's creatinine phosphokinase, yes, it should be creatinine phosphokinase, creatinine, creatinine phosphokinase, so, okay, so, so duration, this is seconds, minutes, this is absence seizures. Okay, fine. So we can live out this, I think. We can leave this because this is now in distinction between the different types of seizures. Okay, so let's fill in this table so that before we actually, uh, before we get back, we can increase the size of this here. Okay, so here generally none. There's no precipitating factor. So here emotional stress. Stress. Valsalva maneuver. You may have tunnel vision, lethargy, you may have nausea, you may have diaphoresis. Then none or vague, which even reminds me, also get a chest x-ray if there are some cardiac pathologies. So I think that's also another important investigation that we can also do a chest x-ray. A chest x-ray. It's just extra. Okay, especially for cardiac pathologies. Cardiac pathologies. Okay, so generally none. Um, any posture. Seizures can happen in any posture. Here they are generally standing. Transition to unconsciousness here is immediate. Here it's gradual. 
over seconds and usually preceded by premonitory symptoms. It's like a premonition. Duration is minutes with seizures, seconds with syncope. Here they are cyanotic with seizures. They appear uh, pale-like in uh, fainting. Sorry, this should have been here. The actual duration of the clinics so are 30 to 60 seconds. Then here, if it is present, if there's some twitching, if present, less than 15 seconds, very short. So here, the cyanotic and facial appearance, pallid with syncope, post events. So they occur minutes to hours. And then if present here, so if present, they're going to be less than five minutes over there. So tongue biting here, occasional. You may bite the tongue, they are rare. And then consistency is occasional, incontinence rather. It's also occasional in, in fainting. It's occasional, elevated, so this is frequent. Here it's occasional. So this is a good way actually to distinguish between your seizures and your syncope. All right, so I think that gets rid of this. So I can actually close that up. So we can have a look at this. This is very, very similar to Kuma and Clark, actually. And we can get back to that table that we're actually looking at. Very, very similar to Kuma and Clark. And yeah, it's actually very similar to a grand mal fit may accompany hypoglycemia and seizure threshold is. No, that's with hypocalcemia. Okay, I think that's one thing that we can actually add to this. That's why electrolytes is also very, very important to actually do. So we can say hypocalcemia. So here, one mile, fit may accompany, accompany hypocalcemia, calcemia. So seizure threshold is lowered. Okay, so this, we don't make this boat. Vertigo, is there anything about vertigo? So... Okay, fine. Choking causes an intense coughing, laryngeal spasms. However, blah, blah, blah. Heimlich maneuver. Okay, fine. Drug reactions. Okay, fine. I think we've fairly captured most of the things that we need to capture concerning syncope from this book. Okay, so I think the investigations are also... Mm, okay, so the immediate management of syncope or impending syncope is to lay down. To lift the legs okay fine this actually is something that is much more substantial here okay so treatment depending on the ensure that the patient is lying down so okay in the recovered position so that the patient should lay down and, and lift the legs Record the vitals, especially pulse, especially pulse and BP. Okay, loosen, loosen tight clothing, clothing around the neck, turn in tight clothing. On neck laces around the neck and then in rare circumstances where cerebral blood flow cannot be restored okay so here so in rare circumstances where cerebral cerebral blood flow cannot be restored stored e.g. propped upright in a dentist chair Cerebral infarction can follow syncope. Okay, so I think that takes care of this. So there's just other conditions that you should keep in mind.
panic attacks, I think we will read from Kumain Clark. This seems very, very similar to what is in Kumain Clark. Uh, vertigo, choking. Okay, you're able to know if someone is choking. And paroxysmal dyskinesia, that we have no more movements. Okay, we can close this up. Let's see what Harrison is actually saying over here. So here there was an approach that they were using. So normal history and physical examination, vasodepressor, so neurocardiogenic syncope, so tilt uh, testing if recurrent, history suggestive of cardiac disease, physical examination of normal cardiogenic syncope, ECG echocardiograph. Okay, examination reveals orthostatic hypertension, review the medication. If it's a normal neurological examination, consider a postganglionic autonomic insufficiency, so pharmacological evaluation of autonomic function. Then peripheral neurons, diabetes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is pretty much the diagnostic approach. And I think most of these things we talked about, even the tilt table test, we actually talked about, even though this is beating in, into so many stories. And I think this is more if you have a lot of time to actually read through this. And I don't think we have that much time to read through all this. So you can actually skip that. I think this is actually sufficient enough. So let's just finish the last bit on the table and then we will be done. So I've already done one for epilepsy versus... Yeah, I've done one for epilepsy. So we can actually remove this. I've done this at the end. So let's actually just remove this. So the non-epileptic attacks here, so these ones are regularly cause difficult, cause difficulty in diagnosis, diagnosis, okay? Attacks may look like grand mal fits. Usually they are bizarre, bizarre, thrashing, non synchronous limb movements but there can be extreme difficulty in separating in separating these attacks from seizures okay eeg video telemetry is valuable it sounds like a very very fancy fancy term telemetry video telemetry is, is possible so apparent status epilepticus can occur the serum prolactin levels is of some value is of some value is of some value Okay, so this rises during a grand mal, grand mal seizure, but not during pseudo, pseudo seizure, or a partial seizure. Okay, so make this table a bit big here. So panic attacks here, triggered by sudden or trigger sudden not triggered by so trigger sudden sympathetic 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 activation and often hyperventilation leading to respiratory 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 alkalosis because you're blowing out carbon dioxide they cause some or all the following symptoms. I can just say symptoms here. Symptoms. So dizziness, chest pains, or tightness, a feeling of choking or shortness of breath, tingling in face. And Let's extremities, um, palpitations, trembling, and a feeling of dissociation or of impending doom. Okay, panic attacks are very horrible, by the way. 
very, very horrible. So remember, keep saving your work as we go because it's very, very important. Then consciousness is the last point is usually preserved and attacks easily recognized. Okay, so that's the last statement here. So we can actually save this and we can minimize this and we actually maximize this. Okay, we can actually move this a bit. We can reduce the size of this so that most of it will just fit perfectly like that on a single sheet. Okay, we can actually edit this now. So this is our final master copy that we're going to be looking at in terms of syncopy. So as you can see, we have the definition over there. The important terms are already highlighted. The history, the physical examination, investigations that are needed. Of course, the causes and the types of syncope over there. Other causes, the differential diagnosis and some important features. The management of the syncope and complications. And this table, I think, can come to the last bit here. So I'm satisfied with everything. Generally, what we're done with the study session, and we can actually save this. So I actually love to save this as a PDF. So you can actually save this as a PDF. So we save as a PDF. We can save it to the desktop over there. So if you want the bookmarks to show, go to options here, select create bookmarks, create with headings, and actually we can save that. We can actually add the asyncopy by Dr myself then we actually save that it, it will take a, a short while because this is not a large pdf file so there we go and that's it we're done with our study session i really hope you actually learned a lot and we did syncopy together i will release a, an official video on this actually teaching on syncopy and you actually see the difference between studying and the process of actually teaching. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu to Zambia and beyond. Bye-bye.